Well, hello everyone in Stamping Land here on Facebook Live. Let me get us brought up here on Facebook so I can see comments. Oh, look, there we are. Woohoo! Let's hope that my iPad is going to let me see what is going on. So, I hope you guys had a great weekend. Um, yesterday, Sunday, um, we, I had my in-person um, live class here in town where I live locally. We did three beautiful Christmas cards. So I kind of told them all for the next two months, this month and next month, we will be doing Christmas cards. I hold two um, in-person classes a month. I do it on a Sunday for people who can come in on weekends and then I do it on a Thursday. <clears throat> so people who, you know, have to do a weekday have a weekday option as well. So I am Danny Garola here in Tucson, Arizona, coming at you from Stampin' the Pink Barn. So you will find all the details, all um, the dimensions, all the good stuff over on my blog, stampinthepinkbarn.blogspot.com. This, um, all the, that good things, you know, all those things will be up, um, hopefully by tomorrow afternoon. Um, it is, just to let you know, it is six o'clock, um, what are we, six o'clock Pacific time, um, seven o'clock mountain, and hello, Frida, and that would be, uh, eight o'clock central and nine o'clock eastern. Woo! As many times as I've done that, why I always get stumbled up on the times, I'll never know. Hello, Kay. Hello, Cheryl. Thank you guys for coming in and saying hello. I always enjoy seeing who pops in here. And we've all know the, you know, the things that have been going on with uh, Facebook the last um, couple of weeks. So I, I was hoping that I could come on tonight because things were being a little weird on my screen, on my phone when I do the recording, but it all worked out well and I'm here and I've got some beautiful cards to show you as usual. So uh, it has been, you know, I can really tell and I know it's really hard to tell fall here in Tucson, Arizona, but I can definitely tell the weather is changing. It's a really windy day today. For the last two days in a row, we've got to shut our air conditioning off and open up the doors and enjoy the fresh air. That's always a wonderful time of year when we can also see the electric electricity bill come down. <laughs> that's, that's always a plus. So um, today uh, it was just really windy and so we have a air purifier thing and that thing was just full blast because since the wind and it's been dry for the last couple of weeks you a lot of dust comes in the house so with opening up all the doors you start seeing a layer of dust on everything so uh, not so fun for me because I got to dust everything but oh well I still love the fresh air and you can definitely tell that um, fall is upon us because it's now six o'clock here and the sun's already going away. And normally, like summertime here, we stay um, we stay light until like nine o'clock. Um, so you can definitely tell when that sun starts going away around six-ish, that fall, winter is upon us. Um, but yeah, and then I've seen, God, I was watching, oh, the news. It said that, I think it was last week, I think it was last week they said that uh up north arizona they had snow up there crazy i was like wow that snow what is that <laughs> yeah no we had the first year we moved here in 2012 we actually had a snowstorm it was the most beautiful thing like to have the desert 
just be all white like that and to see everything with snow on it oh it was beautiful didn't last long but it was still beautiful i still have that saved memory <laughs> so all right well i guess i told you guys you know what was kind of going on for my weekend and having the um in-person class and um what else i'm trying to think what else did we do i guess i did nothing <laughs> kind of boring I'm such a homebody I I like to just sit in my craft room and I make cards all day long every day you know that's just how I roll I don't like really going out much um, we've been doing a lot of barbecuing um, my husband uh, has been looking at a specific brand and I think I told you guys this a while ago um, had been looking for had been watching like reviews and stuff on a certain barbecue slash smoker it's the Traeger brand and or Traeger however you say that um, and he I told him I said I go okay I said you do so much for our family I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna let you go buy um, Costco we love Costco Costco had a uh, special deal on exclusive uh, Traeger that they had there I told him I said go ahead and go buy it because once he was looking at I was like we could never afford those that's like and, and I mean in all honesty they're kind of like the Cadillac of grills and the ones that he was looking at I mean were up on in the thousands of dollars and I was like that's just not realistic for us to buy a thousand dollar plus um, grill so uh, Costco had a really great deal like I mean really great and we're talking under a thousand dollars and it does like everything like I'm telling you this is like the Cadillac of grills it has it's kind of crazy it's Wi-Fi so when you uh, set the the temperature on the grill it all goes to your phone and tells you the temperature of it internally and how much because uh, it's one of those it's the kind that does the smoking along with doing the grilling and he's been making oh my gosh he's done it he's made it twice now he made this homemade macaroni and cheese on it oh it is to die for you do like Gouda cheese and your, I think he makes the macaroni noodles first to get them nice and soft and tender. El, you make them El Dente, I guess they call it. Um, oh my gosh, the stuff is heaven. And it doesn't, he makes this great big, he uses my, I have this huge like 14 inch cast iron skillet and he fills that thing up and puts bread, bread crumbs over the top of it and oh, it's like heaven on earth, but it doesn't last long. <laughs> my son gets into it in the middle of the night and he'll devour it the next day you're like oh my gosh where's the macaroni and cheese oh no he he hammered it but that's teenager boy for you so all right let's get you guys flipped around here because I know you didn't come to hear me blabber but I'm good at it so all right hold on don't get sick no no throwing up and stamping okay so hold on just a minute let me get you guys flipped around here pretty well are we low enough down here yep hold on. hold on hold on hold on don't open yet okay there we go I think we're better now alrighty so we have a new paper pumpkin that just started today it is called gifts galore paper pumpkin kit so let me get this other light turned on. I had to shut it off um, earlier because it has too much of a glare. So we'll turn it back on now. This is going to make, um, includes enough supplies to create nine oversized treat boxes with coordinating food safe bags. An easy to make and even easier to enjoy Christmas project arrives in a specialty box and comes with an exclusive stamp set and a flirty flamingo classic stamping spot so that's cool it's gonna be a little pink uh, 
Flirty Flamingo is right here. So it's kind of like this pinkish color. That's the color that's going to be coming in this kit, which they don't normally tell us that, but that's awesome. I like that. It says, we all love to see piles of presents on Christmas morning. Make that your reality with the gift, the gifts galore paper pumpkin kit with bright festive colors, classic Christmas sentiments, a charming snowman, and more festive designs. You'll have everything you need to make eye-catching treat packages that are sure to spread Christmas cheer. There's plenty of joy to share with gifts galore. So as you can see right here, it kind of looks like a little treat box, but then it says that it's gonna come with the little treat bags. So it just kind of fits down inside of there. So um, you could put like, they have popcorn. And I know you guys have seen like the festive color popcorn that uh, comes in like, you can put the food coloring in it and make it the red and the green. That would be really cute in there. Hello, Melanie. Um, so really kind of cute little kits. Or I think you could probably use these not knowing, I mean, I'm not sh quite sure what they look like, but you could even probably use these as tags. Now, not certain, but you guys know that every last Thursday of the month, I will do my paper pumpkin live and show you guys some alternatives to the kit. So this kit we will do on November. Oh, well, that's not going to work because November 25th, which is the last Thursday of November is Thanksgiving. So I think we might have to bump it to either Friday or Wednesday. I might actually do the, no, because that's going to be Black Friday. So I might actually do it on the 24th. Um, I might do this kit on November 24th, which is a Wednesday at 6 p.m. I think that's probably going to work best um, as long as I don't have a bunch of baking to do. But we'll, we'll see when we get there. As we get closer, because um, this kit just started today. So last kit, the one, the Peaceful Christmas, I will be doing that this month, October 28th. I will be doing a Facebook Live for that one. Um, so just know that. Mark that in your, you, it's on my events here on my page. You can always go in and say you're going to it. And that will let you know as you get closer to that day, you can pop in and, you know, see what's going on and how I do the alternatives and all that stuff. So kits collection, I've been telling you guys we have a couple new kits. So I actually was able to print off. This one is that Christmas whimsy card kit that I was telling you guys about. So this is the one that makes the um, eight cards. So it's four of each design. And here's everything that comes with it. Look at these beautiful uh, gold foiled looking envelopes that come with that. Hopefully you guys can see that. Do I have it up far enough? Okay, I'm gonna stand up so I can see. Ooh, it's nine o'clock in Florida. Woo! Wow, girl. You're pretty awesome for being on here at nine o'clock at night though. I have to give you kudos for that. This is the stamp set that comes in with this. So look at these amazing little Christmas um, sentiments that come in this. How fun are those? So just know with this kit, these are gonna be forever yours. You know, you'll make your cards, but then you'll always be able to make more cards with the stamp set that you're gonna be getting. The other kit that is Christmas themed is this um, Love Santa tag kits. These are um, little tags that go on your gifts. So you'll make three of each of the four designs. Super cute. Um, here is the little stamp set, kind of hard to see, but that's the stamp set that will come with it. And it looks like Night of Navy is the color that comes with this kit. Did I? Oh, and it looks like it's either Misty Moonlight or Night of Navy that comes up with that one also. So if you go into my store and just hit um, in that little uh, magnifying glass, and if you just hit uh, kits, 
it will take you right to there. Then I was telling you guys how we have a new promotion coming up. Hello, Lois. How are you, my dear? Um, that uh, is coming up, but I won't get too in detail with it. We probably like the last week of October, I'll probably talk more about it, but uh, I'm going to start posting pictures on the Facebook page. So you will start seeing this pop up on there. You are doing good. That is awesome to hear. I am doing well also. Yep. Another week going live. So Facebook's working good for us. So I can't complain. Um, so this is called the Eden's Garden. This will be available um, for you guys to order. It is one of our kits that will be in the, in the January, uh, June mini catalog that will be coming up. So they're giving you guys an early exclusive, an early release of this collection. So here is the stamp set here, and this is the dies. Ooh, and there's a fly that is being not so nice. Go away. Um, so here's the stamp set. Here's the dies. So it is a full bundle that you can order, or you can get them separately. Then... If you want, you can do the whole collection here that you will get one of each of these things. And here is the collection number here. Like I said, this will not go live for you guys until November 2nd. But this paper here, I think is just beautiful. It is the specialty paper. So it is gonna have that gold foiling in it. And then this paper here, I know you're probably looking at it and go, wow, that looks just like Evening Evergreen and Soft Succulent. Well. You're not wrong, it is, but it is cotton paper. Now, I, I don't have this, so I don't know what cotton paper is, but it sounds pretty cool. It says you're gonna get 10 sheets, five of each of the two colors. And then you have these beautiful gems over here. It says that they're cherry cobbler and soft succulent. So just know that that is going to be coming up So keep watch for that. Like I said, that goes live on November 2nd. I gotta put my hair up so I'm not getting hair on everything. All right, so let's do the winner of last week's card. So we made this card here. This is a little Christmas card. Then we did this Halloween card where we did the little bats on the envelope um, this one is the DSP on that and then we did that uh, gold uh, specialty paper on that and then there was the snowman one sending you blessings peace uh, or blessing peace and magic this Christmas season and then we did the envelope with the snowflakes and then the beautiful embossing on the back of that. This one, I think I left it blank because I was thinking that if anybody has any October birthdays or something, this would be really cute for that. And then this one says, love and joy come to you and may it last the whole year through. Very cute. So the winner is, I had it written down, Melanie Foy. And I know you're watching because I was just talking to you. So Miss Melanie, I know it's nine o'clock where you're at. So if you're still watching, you can let me know which one of these cards you want mailed to you. Not sure when you're gonna be heading back this way, but um, it will be in your mailbox if you let me know, um, you know, soon and I can get this in the mail for you. Alrighty, okay, so. This is my current host code right here. So use my host code when you place an order under $150. Um, this helps me be able to, you know, do these giveaways and all that kind of stuff. And I think I'm gonna actually start upping my giveaways where I might start giving away all three cards because I just, oh good, you'll be back on Saturday. Um, because I just want to start getting more people involved in um, winning cards because I have a plethora of them and I need to start sending them to you guys because 
You guys are my viewers and you guys are what keep me going here. Um, so I was telling you guys that all the dimensions and photos and this video will be uploaded to my blog, which is stampinthepinkbarn.blogspot.com. And then all my links to my store and I also put the link for the clearance rack because we did just have a clearance rack, rack um, revamp, I guess you would call it, where we had new products put in the clearance. Um, not sure exactly what items are still in there, but there was quite a few new things put in there. Kind of some good, I think there was some neat Christmas stuff in there. All right, so let's go ahead and do, get our first card going here. So I am going to be using the dies from the Ornate Thanks, and it's called Ornate Layers. I'm going to be using this piece right here, but we, I want to show you this beautiful paper. This is called the Whimsy and Wonder um, Designer Series Paper. This is another one of those paper papers that have that foiling effect to them. So like that snowflake there has got that silver foiling. So Melanie, if you want to let me know which card you want, it will be in your mailbox waiting for you. Wink, wink. <laughs> and then, so on all these, and I love the colors of this. Of course, me and my pink, and then having it be Christmas themed on top of that. Pink Christmas, whew, who can go wrong? Thank you so much for sharing, Melanie. I appreciate that. Yes. If you can please share my video, that is what helps me build my business. And you know, who doesn't want help building a business, right? And I need your help because that's who helps me is you guys sharing, liking, commenting, because that helps with the algorithm. So down on the bottom of this uh, video that's going right now, you'll see like a little thumbs up, a heart, a little, uh, emoji holding a heart and then a laughing and a oh my goodness and then a sad and then a I'm mad if you guys could hit those likes or those little hearts that would be amazing because the more of you guys hit those throughout the video the more the algorithm will bring this video up as we're going you know along with the video all right so the first card we are going to do is this little beauty right here. All right, let me get all the pieces out here. So let me move this. Okay, that's gonna be that piece. This is gonna go there. All right, so this piece here is six and three quarters by four and a quarter scored at one and one quarter so we're just going to fold that over and varnish that okay then we need a piece of basic white this is um five and a quarter by four that's going to go in the inside of our card just like that then we need a piece of um because i chose this designer series paper see that foiling on there can you guys see that shimmer and it's almost like an iridescent um look to it thank you so much Kay, for sharing and then that's the back side that's that petal pink all right so this is three by three then we have a piece of mossy meadow i don't know if i told you that's what this color was this the card base was mossy meadow then you have a piece of mossy meadow, which is three and a quarter by three and a quarter. So it's square. That's going to layer on there. And then we have a piece of blushing bride, which is three and a half by three and a half. Okay. That's going to go on there just like that. Okay. Then we are going to, ah, oh, here it is. We're going to need a piece of, that is actually, we're gonna need two pieces of this. They're both the same size. Now these are um, one and one quarter by four and a quarter. 
Okay, so we're going to lay those there. We're going to know this one piece is going to come over here. Wait a minute. Is that the right one? Yep. This piece is going to come over here, so just set it there. And then you have another piece of Blushing Bride, which is one and one half. One and one half by four and a quarter. Or, no, four and a half. So one and a half by four and a half. This one was one and a one and one quarter by four and one quarter. Okay, so it's just a quarter of an inch, inch smaller. Okay, so let's go ahead and get this done. We're going to need this piece here, and that was that uh, border that came from the ornate layers. I used the little piece here. These all kind of coordinate inside of each other. So I'm gonna use that one, and then I'm also going to use the ornate thanks. And I am probably going to do the thank you right here. And I was debating when I was going, when I was thinking about this card, whether or not I wanted to do the word in Blushing Bride, or we're going to do it in Mossy Meadow. I think the Blushing Bride might just make it pop on that, but then, I don't know, we're gonna try it. If we don't like it, I can always cut out another one and then do that. Okay, so let's set this out of the way. Oh, actually, you know what, hold on. There was another little piece. You need a half inch strip by four and this is gonna go on the inside of our card right here. So let's actually adhere this part. Okay, there's a glue, go glue goober. Yeah, we had a really good time yesterday at my um, in-person class. Like I was saying, we made three beautiful cards. I was gonna bring them in here and show them to you, but I thought, no, I'm gonna wait until we have our Thursday class because I know some people who watch this um, haven't seen the cards yet and I don't wanna do any spoilers because how I do it is when I do my event on Facebook, for my Thursday class, or for my um, in-person classes, I don't show the full cards, but I show just little sneak peeks of each card that we're going to be making during the stamp party, my in-live classes, because I don't wanna give it all away because obviously that's what you're coming there for, is to make the cards, and so I just kind of show off the highlight of the card to um, anybody who signs up for the class and then when they get there they're like "Ooh, oh, oh my gosh I didn't think that that was gonna look like that and then they're totally amazed because they're like oh in my mind I didn't even that wasn't even something that came to my mind looking like that so yeah and then they're just like oh my gosh that is so gorgeous so I like doing that to give everybody a surprise it's kind of like their their little Christmas in whatever month we're in. But they did know that they were gonna be all Christmas themed for the next two months. I make sure I tell them or I ask for opinions like, hey, so next month, what kind of cards do you guys, do you guys need birthday cards? Is next month like a really big birthday month for you? Okay, so there's that. Let's go ahead and stamp. Set that there. I'm going to, since these are photopolymer, I need to grab one of my uh, piercing mats to have that foam cushion underneath that. Because with photopolymer, they have no cushion in between the stamp and the block. Let's see, is that gonna fit? Yep, that'll fit on that one. So they need to have a cushion underneath these stamps because sometimes. I hear from customers that their stamp isn't working. 
And so when I ask him, I'm like, so is it photopolymer or is it a red rubber? Because if it is a red rubber stamp, which, let me see if I have a red rubber. Oh, right here. Here's a red rubber, just to show you the difference. See how these are red rubber and they're foam mounted. They're mounted already on the foam. So when you stamp this, it's going to have that give behind that foam. So when they, they tell me, oh, no, it's a photopolymer, it's that clear stamp, and I'm asking them, are you putting it on some kind of foam? You can even use that foam that comes at like your dollar store, those little thin sheets. That's enough of a cushion to absorb that cushion of the stamp to make it lay crisp on your um, cardstock. Okay, so we're going to try, ugh, did I just stick my finger? Ooh, I didn't. I thought I stuck my finger right in there. Look like one of my hairs were in there, but I guess not. I haven't used this Blushing Bride in a long time, so if this does not stamp the way I want it, I'm going to show you guys a trick. Okay, and it didn't. Do you see where it's like, where it looks like it's light over here and it looks like it has these weird little like marks in it? Let me show you. If you have not used your pad in a while, let me show you a trick. Hold on, let me grab a baby wipe really quick. Okay, so if you haven't used your pad in a while, and look at my pad. See how it's kind of like lighter on this side and darker over here? That's probably where my light and dark came in on that stamp. Just take even a, like this, a, um, you know, cheapy little plastic spoon if you don't have a bone folder. And you can either use a bone folder and do it like that and then clean your bone folder off because you obviously use this to varnish your stuff. Or let me show you how you do it with the back of a spoon. You just move the ink around so it distributes it nicely and then I always just keep that spoon sitting handy for this very reason. Okay. So now I'm going to, let's try this again. And I'm going to do it right over here so you can see the difference. See, that came out really light too, so hold on. Maybe I need to re-ink this. Maybe that's what it is. Oh no, that's a little bit better. What are you looking for? Oh. All right, so I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna cut this out just like that, so hold on. So I don't think I've told you guys about my tips, tricks, and techniques video that I send out every month. So I make a tips, tricks, and techniques video for customers who spend over $25 a month. So that's how you get that. Or you get my tips, tricks, and techniques video if you are on my team. I do that for all of my team members. So I make a little short YouTube video and then I make these, um, a little PDF that shows you exactly how to do a certain kind of trick, um, or technique when it comes to stamping. So normally something like that would be something that would be in there, but this is something clearly everyone needs to know when you have, um, when, um, you have the, uh, sorry. A message just popped up in my on my iPad um, that's something everybody who has a stamp pad needs to know that trick on moving that ink around okay so this is gonna go on here so see how that fits beautifully on that just like that okay 
So now, watch what we're going to do. Hello, Mother. Haven't seen you in quite some time on here. <clears throat> okay. So now we're going to go ahead and <clears throat> take this and put this on here. that okay that's going to stay shut this piece needs to sit right over here so this is kind of where it gets a little tricky <clears throat> now you're gonna have to hold this down and hold this in place and then set this kind of where you want it so now I know that I have about you know a quarter of an inch where I need to put glue down the sides of this and I'm just gonna go light with the glue because I don't want it squeeze like squeezing out yes you did finally make it right it's been forever okay just like that and then push it down because now that you made this sit flush with the back of your card and you know with the um, liquid glue, you have like a few minutes to move this to make it where it's going to sit perfect. Okay, just like that. Now we're going to take this and this is going to go across the front of this. So then when it opens, it's going to open like that. Very cool, right? Beautiful. Okay, so let me see. I was thinking, do I want to bump this up? I think I want that on dimensionals, actually. So let me get a pack of dimensionals. So, oh, here, I was going to show you guys this. So you know when you get down and you use all the inside, these little cubies here that are all inside of your dimensional, your pack of dimensionals, you're going to be left with this border. Do not throw it away. I mean, I guess it's your discretion if you want to throw it away or not, but I'm telling you, these can be used just like the dimensionals here. Just cut them. Even the really nice thing about it is you can cut these very, very small to get little slivers to do behind very intricate things. So my advice is don't throw these away, use them. So I'm just gonna cut a few of these. Just like that okay and then we're going to put this right in the center of this okay what do you guys think of that isn't that so cool Okay, now if I had something with like little swirls, what I probably should have done, I like this card the way it is, but to kind of take it one step up, if you had something with like little ivy, or ivy, with, uh, what are those called? Holly, holly leaves, that's what they're called, to just do a stamp of same color of mossy meadow and do them on this this mossy meadow the two sides here just to kind of give it an extra dimension to it I guess I would say oh good I'm glad you love this card I know I saw this and it was in completely different colors and everything and I thought oh my goodness I love that design and then I haven't played much with this paper the whimsy and wonder designer series paper that I thought Oh my heavens, I have to make a card with that paper because that paper would just pop with these colors. And I love these colors together. I thought what might be kind of cool is even if you 
reversed this and did the card base in the blushing bride and then did the kind of the accents as I mean if you you know what I'm talking about and did that in mossy meadow that would be beautiful or you could even do some mint macaron because you've got that in there all right since we don't have any silver because I was kind of gonna go with the silver in this since we don't have any silver uh, ribbon whatever that word is I went through my stash now I'm gonna show you this I'm not going to put to, I'm not gonna put it on this card because I don't like showing you guys things that we don't sell but I know there's some of you guys watching that have product from you know last catalog or catalogs from the past and so we sold this uh, I think it was just in last catalog um, the blushing bride it was that two-sided where or actually yeah I don't remember what catalog this was but it couldn't be from that long ago but um, you had a double-sided ribbon one had like that gold flex those little flakes of gold in there and then the other side was all solid blushing bride so what I did was I made a bow that I just want to show you guys what it would look like if you had this ribbon that you could attach to this same card now see you could put that on this corner over here and just have that be so stinking pretty right isn't that gorgeous but I want to show you another trick on making our um, this is soft succulent I'm gonna make this match this card but I'm gonna do it in mossy meadow so I'm gonna grab my mossy meadow um, the dark and I'm gonna use this is the open weave soft succulent ribbon that is in the catalog right now because this is one of our current in colors So I'm going to use the more painter side. And hold this down. And make sure you have a scrap underneath your, your ribbon before you do this so you don't make a mess on everything. And I'm just going to make, you know couple inches of this to give myself enough to make a bow okay I can see that I missed a little part over here on the edge so let me go over this All right, so isn't that so cool that you can color our ribbon to make it be whatever color you need it? And you're gonna color your fingers as well, but that's okay. Um, that was alcohol ink, so it won't transfer to too many things like water-based ink would. Okay, so I'm just gonna give that just a couple of seconds to dry and let me put some of this stuff away. And then I'm gonna grab my, you know, my bow maker because I'm so fabulous at making bows. okay there is our perfect little bow and look at that that is the original color of that and that is the color that we just made it oh isn't that so cool oh I love it okay so 
let me get this out of the way and get this bow stuck on our card. Okay, I need a snap dot or a mini glue dot. To take this and I'm going to stick this on the back. I'm going to roll it a little bit so it's right there on the back of that and then I'm going to place this right here. Okay and then I'm going to cut off some of these long crazy ends just like that. So what do you guys think of that? Isn't that gorgeous? Then, I was trying to think if we had any Blushing Bride um, to see, I don't think that, that seems too pink, right? Maybe just pearls. I know we have the opal rounds, but I don't think those are current, are they? Does anybody know if these are current in the catalog? Are those something that I had from a while ago? Even the pearls would look good. Where did you get the little bow maker? Okay, so my, um, my, what do I call her? My team leader, she actually uh, has a friend who her husband makes these. And it's just carved out of a little block of wood he took a little drill and drilled in the, cause see, there's, there's six little holes. He took a popsicle stick and a nail and then took a bigger drill and made this because these, and look at these, these are just nails with the heads broke off of them. Like super stinking cute and probably can be remade, but he only charged like $10 for these things. And that was including shipping. So, I mean, if you have a handy crafter husband or, you know, even yourself, if you are good with working with wood and then he just kind of d did the Dremel and did the sides. And then these store in there and that covers that little hole and then it can be portable. But yeah, you can make lots of different bows. I don't, I don't have the lady's contact anymore. I think maybe her husband doesn't make them anymore because I haven't heard anything about them. So that's why I'm kind of showing you. So maybe you have somebody or even, like I said, yourself, if you can make them. I'll send you a message. There. Okay. All right. That works. Yeah, because they're, they're amazing. What was the message that was right above that that I missed? Mother, you just paid to have new internet put at your house. Why is it not working? That's that's not good. Okay, there's those that might look good, but these are what I was actually looking for. Um, oops, where'd they go? These are matte. No, those aren't going to look good. Okay, never mind. So we do have those, but I think those look more like pool party than they do like mint macaron. I'm just going to go with these. What do you guys think? Either the iridescent or the pearls. I'm going to go with just the pearls, actually, because now looking at those iridescent, they kind of don't look good on that. They kind of take away from that paper. So let's just put some pearls on here. Not that pearls are a girl's best friend because that would be diamonds, but you know what? Pearls work too, right? Pearls might be some girl's best friends because maybe some girls don't like diamonds. Myself, I'm not a big diamond person, but then again, I'm not a big jewelry fan at all. So 
I'm a cheap date. Okay, so there's that card. So what I was going to do for the envelope for this is I was going to take, and I thought I cut myself a piece, but then I just looked in my little basket and I didn't. So let's cut a piece of this paper. Ugh. Well, I thought I had it sitting right here. So look at, let me, since I have this here, look at some of this paper. Isn't this gorgeous see that's where you can really see that shimmer and this one right here is gorgeous do you see that changing the rainbow with that iridescent look in it so I don't know why oh there it is of course it was the very back one wouldn't you know And look at that blushing bride piece right there with those snowflakes. Gorgeous. Okay, let's take this and do our envelope because we need to have a pretty envelope for a pretty card. And I think this is already cut at six inches. Whoop, whoop, not quite, but we're gonna just go with it. So I'm going to cut this at two and a quarter because two and a quarter by six is what you need of your designer series paper to fit on the back of your envelope. Now I know this one is a little long, so I'm just going to cut it down to six. So there we go. We have a six by two and one quarter. Okay, this is gonna fit on the back of our envelope. I am using a basic white envelope. Yeah, my mom up at her house, that's the house that we will be moving into whenever we get it all put together and the way we need it. Um, she just had new internet put into the current home and she just messaged on here and said that her internet isn't working. So that might be a problem. That's what I told her. I said, I go, we have to get the internet. I mean, my internet's not the greatest down where I live and I'm probably, as the crow flies, I'm about maybe three miles away from her. Um, my internet down here is not the greatest, but oh, it is not as bad as hers up there. And she has the same company as us. But for some reason, where she's at, it's like on the bottom of the mountains. And internet, everybody up in her area complains about the internet. And nobody has any solutions for them. It's horrible. So there we go. There's our card. Beautiful, right? Okay, so that was card number one. Let me get, whoops, my garbage can is falling over. That is not okay. So let me get this one out of the way. And then, let's do this one. Okay, we are going to use, oh, you know what? I didn't bring in a, um, I don't think I brought, oh, Wait a minute, what am I doing? I gotta get a stamp set for this one because I didn't grab the stamp set, but that's okay. We'll figure out something. All right, so what I'm doing is we're gonna be using the Evergreen Forest 3D embossing folder. I am going to be using the dies from the, where's that? Oh, right here. My go-to dies that you guys probably have seen me use over and over and then over again. So I'm using the third from the smallest and the second from the smallest for this card. And that was called the Stitched So Sweetly. And then we're using the Evergreen Forest. So let me put these two dies right here so I don't like lose them and even then guaranteed nothing. So, 
we need a card base. This is thick, very vanilla. And this is eight and a half by five and a half. And we're going to score this because even though it is a regular card base that you are going to fold like this, thick cardstock does not want to fold as well as our regular cardstock. But you need to have our thick cardstock for your card um, base when it comes to white or very vanilla. The uh, regular stuff that we cut with and stamp on just won't hold up as well as the thick stuff if you're going to use it as your card base. Okay, so there's that. So let's fold this and varnish that. Okay, just like that. Then we're using Mary Merlot. What a beautiful color. This is four by five and a quarter. And we are going to use this evergreen forest, but I'm gonna turn it this way. So the fold, the fold part will be on my left, okay? And the opening on the right. And I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna lay this in here just like that. But I'm going to also use a strip of gold foil this is one and a quarter by four. And I'm going to lay that kind of over to the side, just like that. And I'm going to, oops, make sure I have it straight first. Actually, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and glue it. So I'm leaving about a half an inch off on the right hand side. I'm going to put that whole piece in here and the way I'm doing this is I'm leaving it where some of the white will be shown but then the tip of this tree will be kind of up so see if you look on this side where you'll just see a little bit of that the uh, not embossed part so you kind of get the effect of what these are just like that Okay, and then we're gonna run this through the embossing machine. So the Stampin' Up! year has just begun. It, um, our year runs from um, the end of September to uh, October. So uh, October is our fiscal year for Stampin' Up. And so I went in to this year being a silver and my goal through the year um, by next October is I'm hoping and keeping my fingers crossed, I already have four team members under me. So I need any of you who would like to be a Stampin' Up! either discount shopper, which there's no judgment, or if um, you want to build a business, um, I need another team member and that will help me get to my silver elite. That is by next year, I am going to be pushing hard to become a silver elite because I'm just one person away. Okay, so that Look at that. Look at that embossing. Isn't that just stunning? Okay, so that's gonna go on the front of our card, but I wanted to use, this is the gold shimmer ribbon. This is in our mini catalog right now. And I'm gonna do this Across the bottom here so I'm gonna leave myself enough that I can tuck it under and tape it okay 
but let's do, before I commit to putting that on there, I want to make sure that my labels are going to be where I want them and that will be centered. So let's get some of these cut. So I am going to use the bigger of the two, so the third one from the, the smallest. I'm going to do that one on gold foil. So you're gonna need a scrap of gold foil. And then this one here, we're going to do it in the very vanilla. Now, actually, I should probably stamp my sentiment first. Let me grab the stamp that I was going to use for that. Hold on just a second. I was going to, wanted to use. Okay, so I think be of good cheer. Sorry, that took me a minute. So, see how this is a red rubber stamp? I don't have to worry about putting that cushion underneath it. Okay, so let me move that, and my fan is blowing that out of the way. So I'm gonna use Mary Merlot. This color is so rich. Oh, I love it. Oh, it's so beautiful. All right, so now I'm going to take, I'm just going to stick this in front of the fan for two seconds to make sure. And while that is drying for a second, I'm going to clean this off so I don't wind up sticking my hand in that. Okay, so did I tell you guys? I don't think I even told you. So I'm using the Holly Jolly Wishes and I use the Be of Good Cheer, which is right here. And I love some of the uh, font on some of these. I think it is so cute. You have some that are really kind of fun and then you have ones that are more of like a beautiful font, that swish look to them. Oh, I just think they're gorgeous. Those are really good for if you're doing Christmas tags as well. Okay, so let's cut this out now. Hello, Gisline, or is that how you say it? I probably just slaughtered your name, but hello. Thanks for joining. horrible with names. I will, I'm not going to lie about that. That is, it's one of my, my many flaws. Okay. So I'm going to put these back in here so I don't lose them. Okay. So this is going to just get put on top of here. Get some glue. Ugh. Like glue boogers. Beautiful that is. 
All right, now we can add this on here because I just need to see that that's going to be up there. Okay, so I'm gonna hold that up here and then flip this over and just grab my tape. Tape this on here. So yes, tape is a crafter's best, a card maker, paper crafter's best friend. I know some people are like, what, tape? Yep, just regular scotch tape, it works. Then I'm gonna take some dimensionals. So again, we're gonna use what we have here and just kind of, ah, stay there. Okay, and I'm gonna do these kind of up towards the top and then some towards the bottom. And I'm gonna show you why in just a second here. So the, this card here is super simple and easy to make a bunch of because you're just running it through, you're gluing this on here, you're running it through your embossing folder, slapping some ribbon on there, put it on your card, and then your piece, and you are good to go. It couldn't be any simpler. And I really like the Mary Merlot on Very Vanilla versus, all, I'll show you the other one that I made and it is in white. It is in our basic white. And I'll show you the difference. And I just think the Very, Verna, Ver, Very Vanilla is a little bit classier than the white. But you guys can have your own opinions on it once I show you um, the white card, the white base. And then you can see the difference and see what you like best. So one of the good things also about this card is you're not having to spend a lot of money on a lot of product because you pretty much need a, you know, holiday stamp of your choice, your sentiment, and then an embossing folder. And then if you already have your embossing machine, pretty much that's what you need, right? That, a good sentiment and some paper and you are good to go with making these cards. So they're really elegant, but really simple and not a lot of money to have to spend. What did that just say? Very rich with the Mary Merlot. Absolutely. Oh, I 100% agree with you. Frida's having Wi-Fi problems too. Oh my goodness. What the heck is going on here? Ugh. I hope it's, you know, we had another one of our demonstrators that is also um, kind of in with our with the team that I'm on um, she actually has decided that she is not gonna do Facebook lives anymore that she is taking her business to YouTube and she was explaining it the other day on one of her lives that she just Facebook is not wanting to listen to people who are you know especially as card makers who this is kind of where our our business lies around is people all over the world can watch us on here and you know with the whole COVID thing going on not a lot of people are wanting to get together still and so this is how we run our business so she was explaining you know there's nobody when you try to get a hold of Facebook there's nobody yeah see Melanie's is buffering also Mm, geez. Well, I hope it's not my internet. Because I I know my internet can be poopy at times too. Okay, so let me show you the white one. Oops, let me take it out of here so you can actually see this card. Okay, so there is the white. There is the very vanilla. So you can kind of see the difference. I, I'm not gonna say that this is, you know, not 
just as beautiful. I just liked it with the very vanilla. Oh, see, K's is fine. So good, it's not my end <laughs> for once. Okay, so what we're gonna do on the inside of this is I need a piece of, what was I gonna do? Gotta look what I did over here. I need a piece of, maybe I'll do this on the inside, across here. That. And then we're going to use a sentiment. What did we put on the B of good cheer? Um, maybe tis the season to be jolly. Um, I'm not quite certain. It's the most wonderful time of the year. B of good cheer. We wish you a Merry Christmas. I think I'm going to do this one because this font is the same as this font. So I'm going to use, we wish you a Merry Christmas. So let me clean this other one off because I need to use this block. Mary Merlot and I'm going to ink that up and place that. I'm going to stand up here so I make sure I get this straight. Straight-ish. Ooh, and it worked. Boom. <laughs> it's always a good day when it comes out straight. Okay, I'm going to put that there, but then I also want a strip of the gold. So let me get my gold back out. Okay, I have a strip right here. Let's hope that this is long enough. Woohoo! It's going to work. All right, let's put this piece down here. Actually, I'm going to put glue on here because, oh, do you see we have a traveling friend coming in and out of the video? Stupid fly. He wants to be famous and be on TV. Fly to the moon. Okay, there's that piece. And then I'm going to take this. another little strip across there and then we're going to take the gold and I'm going to bump it right up against that Mary Merlot piece okay just like that then we're going to cut that off and cut this off get this stuff off the back of there oh I need my Oh, my adhesive remover, because I got glue on the back. Oh, well, I'll clean that off later. Okay, so there's the inside of our card. And then we need a envelope. So I have, oh, well, as I throw it, I have this uh, very vanilla envelope. And I want to see if this will work. Not sure if it will or not. I don't think it's going to now, looking at it. Hmm. Nope. That's not going to work. You know what? Maybe if I took it like that and just brought that tree right up to the top of this line. See the, the fold line on my card? I'm taking this tallest. I'm taking the tallest tree. Can you guys see that? The tallest tree up to the very top of that crease. And then I'm going to run this through just like this. Now, I'm not guaranteeing this is going to look good, but I want to try it. 
end, I want you guys to see. So you guys, if you're thinking the same thing and you go to run it through and you're like, oh, I just wasted an envelope. Well, here, let me waste my envelope if it doesn't look good. Okay, so I love doing this. Oh, and it worked. Oh my goodness. Holy moly. Look at that. Look at that tree scape on that envelope. Isn't that so cool? Oh, okay. So that goes with that card and the inside of our card. We wish you a Merry Christmas. Be of good cheer. So that, oh, that is card number two. Beautiful, right? Okay. So that's that one. Oh, I did show you the white one, right? To just kind of show you the difference. Okay. Let me clean this stamp off. I already cleaned this one. So let me get these out of the way really quick. So that was card number two. Then we're going to be using the, I'm gonna set this here while I clean up some of my mess. Okay, we're gonna be using Perfectly Plaid with the pine trees. Now this set is an oldie, but a goodie. This set has been around in a couple of our catalogs, our past catalogs. This came out a couple years ago, but it is such a popular set that it is still so loved by many. Then we're gonna come in with this one. All right. Put my ring low away because we're done with that. All right. This one we are going to be using the paper that is with that peaceful cabins. This is called Peaceful Place Specialty Designer Series Paper. Again, this is the paper that has the silver foiling on the one side of it. And then the back side is, this is very monochromatic. So you've got your, your grays, the black, and your silver. And we have a really neat silver pack that kind of coordinates very well with this paper. Let me just show you this really quick. We're gonna actually be using a piece of this. So there are the three different silvers that come in this pack. I believe you get um, you get three so you get one of each one of these now this one back here see how this one is more it almost looks kind of purplish if you ask me let me take it out of here so you guys can see it a little bit better because I think that paper is probably glaring like crazy on there all right there is the three different pieces there so you got I think this almost has like a purple tint to it and they are lavender and then this is your silver and they're that brushed uh, silver as well, almost like they've taken a wool uh, scrubber thing and ran over that. And then this one is like a dark silver back here. Again, I think it almost has a purplish tint to it, but it is so stinking beautiful. And then it coordinates so well with this paper here. Let me show you some of this. So you've got like, this is a six by six sheet, but the trees are going in towards each other. So as soon as you cut it down the center, you can make yourself just separate cards with that. Then you've got these, this is a 12 by 12 sheet also. And I just cut it in six by six by six by six squares. Look at that one right there. Look at the little snowflakes that just glimmer. And then you've got these beautiful trees. Then there's the back side of it. The back side of that has got all the little gray and white trees. That's got a little zigzag mark on it. Look at this one. It looks like wood grain, but it's silver. And then you've got the trees on the back side of that. So you can make a scenery just out of this paper. And then this. Oh, and look at those cabins. 
Oh, so cool, right? Here they are. This is, let me just show you. See how they're like six by six by six by six? There's a all snow. Oops, I didn't show you the back of that, sorry. You've got a snowflake. And then we're gonna be using this piece today, that black and white, um, or gray and white, like buffalo plaid and the trees. And this is what I was talking about. You just cut this down the center and then you could have your card bases just like that, or you can do it long ways. Okay. Okay. Just gorgeous paper. I had to take that out and show it to you. Okay. So with this one, oh my hand, I'm blowing everything around. Our card base is going to be basic gray. Card base is basic gray. And we're gonna fold this in half. Now, because this is not thick cardstock, I can go ahead and just fold it in half just like this. Guys have scraps like all over your floor of your area that you're working in boy I do all right and then we're going to need here is oops hold on let me do this in order so I don't screw myself up okay this is going to be the inside of our card so that is basic white and that is four by five and a quarter then we need a piece Oh, what this one measured. Hold on. Where's my? Where did I put my ruler? Ah, I was whipping my husband with the ruler earlier. No, no kinkiness. I was just being silly and just hitting with it. And I broke my ruler. So, oh, there it is. Look, I broke the thing out of it. I was like going like this to him, and I broke the little metal thing out. Well, that's what I get, right, for being. being crazy okay so this is like four by four by five okay this is gonna go on the front here then we're going to use the two I'm gonna still come in with bingo bingo guess what with this set here and I'm gonna use the biggest or no I'm gonna use the second to biggest and then the third to biggest so these two here we're gonna need okay I need a piece of basic gray and I'm gonna run this through basic gray and I was kind of smart and already went ahead and did this get out of here Ooh, that's a B Ooh. this is gonna go on here so that was our Actually, you know what? I did use the biggest one. Okay, that's right. I did use the biggest one. So let's put these away and we'll just start over because I obviously don't know what the heck I'm doing. All right, so the biggest one I did in the basic gray. And then I used basic white and I came in with the next size down and cut that next one out. Then I'm going to use a piece of basic gray, a scrap piece of that uh, designer series paper that we used there. And then I used a piece of that silver foil. So let's get these. I don't know, for some reason, I think I need to cut some more off the side of this or I need a, a bigger piece. I mean, I guess it'll work. We'll just go with it. 
because it's going to be beautiful and you're not even going to notice that. Where's my glue? All right, so let's get this piece down. like that and then these two pieces are going to get adhered to the oops this one onto here okay now that's gonna get dimensionals on the back of it but first we're gonna decorate this piece so I'm going to take this little pine tree punch and I'm just going to punch out a piece of that thing in there. That's going to go there. Then we're going to do one in the silver. So just like that. We're going to kind of tear these up like they're going up. And then I want to do this one right, uh, where did it go? Oh, I wanted to do this one right here. Yep. No, I grabbed the wrong one. This one, with, I need the actual stem on it. Okay, and I'm gonna do that in basic gray. And I'm doing it on gray. Oh, that actually turned out. I didn't put my um, piercing mat underneath that to give a cushion, but that actually worked just fine. So I'm not complaining. All right, then this lines up right on that stamped image. Just like that. And that's gonna go back there. So you see what I'm doing? Just like that. And then we're going to, oh, that goes from the inside. I want to take a piece of, what was I going to use? Was I going to use the, I wasn't sure if I was going to come in with my banner and do a banner across there in white, but obviously we're going to need it in gray first, right? Because we need a gray piece and then a white piece. like that okay we'll do that in a minute because I gotta find let's do we're gonna do the North Pole delivery and actually that just reminded me what I was going to do okay so let's move that out of the way I gotta turn off this fan of mine because we're coming in with some silver um, embossing Folder, and I'm going to need my Versa Mark and my silver. Oops, hold on. My silver. Oops, stick it on there. All right, I am going to bring in this pad though. Ooh, there's little mats can't wait for it to cool down so actually the bugs go away because um, as it cools off, bugs go away. And they're saying that tonight we might have our first freeze. Whoop. 
So I don't know if it's actually going to freeze or not. I'm going to cut this a strip out of uh, three and three quarters and then just cut this down here because I just want that to go across the front. Okay. So now what we're going to do is bring this in here. Um, where did I put my verse mark? Oh, there it is. Jeez. Oh my gosh, Cheryl, then you have to pull this set out and you have to use it. If you're talking about this tree one, which I'm sure that's probably the one you're talking about because um, it's been around for quite a while. Pull it out. It's a beautiful set. You um, will be amazed with what you find on Pinterest. Just saying. Pinterest has so many cards using this set. Okay, so I versa mark that, and now I'm going to use my embossing powder, and I'm using silver, so I'm using silver on basic gray, just like that. I'm going to set that aside so I can put my embossing powder away. I gotta find another little cup, like I normal those little dishes that I use, those snap and seal ones that have the four sides on it so I can put both my silvers in it. Because now that Christmas cards are being made, I use a lot of silver. All right, so since this piece is kind of smallerish, I don't wanna burn myself. So I have a Cricut machine and are actually, I think these are my making memories. I'm just gonna put this in a pair of these tweezers. And then when I use my embossing heat machine, which I just tangled up into the big, huge knot in. Okay, there we go. Then I'm not gonna burn the heck out of myself because I've been holding on to something and oh my Lord, can you feel the burn? Because this thing gets extremely hot. Okay, so I'm gonna hold this up so you guys can kind of see the magic take place on this. Just like that. Beautiful. Oops, let me make sure I got that part down there. Okay. So there's that. All right. Now let's get these little babies on here, these trees. Let's see how we're going to do this. So I was kind of debating whether or not I wanted to do these with dimensionals, but because this whole piece is going to be popped up on dimensionals, I don't want to put them on dimensionals. Okay. Make sure I have that straight. This one. See how pretty that one would have been too with some of those snowflakes on it. And then this one's gonna go right down here. Where'd my baby wipe go? Here, watch. We're just gonna clean this smudgy off. There we go. All right. Okay, now that piece is, let's get this piece out. Um, North Pole Delivery, hoping that your busy year comes together in Christmas cheer. Um, may this 
special season be wrapped in love and joy. I like this one up here, hoping that your, um, what did I say? Hoping that your busy year comes together in Christmas cheer. That's super cute. So I'm going to clean this North Pole delivery off and put it in my case and then stamp this. Using my inside piece but first what I wanted to do is I want to put this here and then make sure that when I stamp this I get this even so let me put this on the outside of my inside piece like that. Cut that off. All right, now we're golden. Let's take basic gray. Ooh, it's so quiet when I turn my fan off. It's kind of eerie. Okay, and we're going to put this right in the center here. Absolutely, Cheryl. I love that you're here to steal ideas. I will let you steal away. Ooh, and that came out really crooked. So we're going to flip this over and get another piece because crooked is not okay. Where did I just put that paper? I was just showing it to you guys, right? Where did I put it? Oh my goodness. Oh my geez, I was just showing you guys that paper and <gasps> Oh, that's right. Oh, I stuck it over here. Oh my goodness. I swear sometimes I'm losing my marbles. You guys feel like that ever that you're just losing it? <laughs> or am I the only one losing it? Please don't let me know that if it's just me. Just lie to me and tell me, nope, you know, we're all losing it. <laughs> it's not just you. Okay, so I'm going to take another piece of that half inch because I got that stamp really crooked and I don't like crooked. So I'm going to do it this way. But yeah, Cheryl, that is absolutely why I'm here, is to give you guys inspiration on making cards and using either some of the product that you already have or, you know, I love earning people's business because, you know, that's what I do. That's why I sell this stuff because I believe in our product, so... One of, one of my team members, she was telling me yesterday, um, that came out much better. Um, she was telling me that her husband, because she was trying to justify, you know, spending a bunch of money on stamping up stuff. And she was telling her husband that the quality of stamping up stuff is just, you know, it, it, there's nothing like it. I mean, I know there's a couple of other companies out there. I don't even know the name of them. And they have good quality stuff too. Don't get me wrong. I'm not going to bash another company. But he was trying to justify the fact that um, if she went down to um, a box store, some of the craft stores, that she can buy the same items there and save herself money. And she goes, no, I'm not because, number one, I'm a demonstrator, so I already get a discount. So I'm already getting the stuff at a good price that... There's no way a box store is going to give me the quality. So he went down and he bought some card stock and he bought some stuff for her to show her that he, he could save her some money going to this box store. 
So he comes home with some cardstock and she goes, well, number one, it doesn't match the colors that I have in ink because I have Stampin' Up! ink, which then matches Stampin' Up! ribbon, which matches Stampin' Up! paper, which then matches, you know, the pens, everything, you know, everything matches, the colors all go together, everything coordinates. And she goes, so uh, you're going to have to take it back just for that reason. He goes, okay, well, hold on. He goes, hold on. Let's just compare, you know, like the paper, the cardstock. So they take out the cardstock and she goes to stamp on some of the white cardstock that he bought. And he, she goes, oh, it, and you know, honestly, as being a demonstrator, I watch other demonstrators because I can't ever, you know, come up. I mean, I come up with my own ideas. Don't get me wrong. But sometimes you get like just foggy brained. And when I'm making cards, all, you know, every day, all day, or not all day, but every day I sit down and I make a card. There's pretty much not a day that doesn't go by that I don't make a card unless I have a lot of doctor's appointments for, you know, one of my kids or something like that. But for the most part, I pretty much live in my craft room. And that's, that's not a joke. That is totally 100% real. So sometimes I just get into a brain fog where I cannot, for the life of me, come up with an idea. So myself, I have to then go to Pinterest. I have to go to YouTube and I have to watch other demonstrators because there are some very talented people out there. I am not going to lie to you at all. And they are full of, you know, ideas. And that's what we're all here for. We're here to help one another. It's not one person trying to outdo the next. I mean, I don't think that's not what I'm about. I mean, I'm sure, yes, there's some probably some competition when you start getting bigger into selling and stuff. And, and that's fine. I'm not really there, so I don't have a problem with, you know, sharing ideas with other demonstrators. Even my team leader, who is like big in the Stampin' Up! world, she used one of my card creations that I came up with in one of her demonstrations. And she texts me that morning and she goes, hey, do you mind if I use this card? And I was like, absolutely not. That's, you don't know how many cards of hers I've used to show you guys. So... That's what we're here for is to show you guys ideas and we all have our own styles of doing things and you know there's some cards that I like that use certain stamp sets and there's other cards that I'm like nope that's just not for me so it, it you know it's okay it can be like that all right so now I'm just going to adhere this maybe on the front of and I'm just doing it where I'm right on the lines of, see how this has little lines? So, because I want to see that little white scallop underneath there. And I still want these hanging over the edges. But just like that. Isn't that so pretty? Now, I wish we had some gray embellishments. But you know what? This is when diamonds or rhinestones, and I just had them, oh there they are, rhinestones are going to work perfect on here, because we already have the silver here, so let's bling this baby up, just like that, and let's do one more big one. Oh my goodness, right? Woo. Just stunning. Now, again, I saw this card on Pinterest, but it was completely different colors. It was from some older DSP or designer series paper that we used to have. And I thought, nope, we have that beautiful, peaceful, um, peaceful place. Why can't I yeah, peaceful place paper. And I'm a big time uh, buffalo plaid person. I love it. And I thought, uh, no, I'm redoing this card and I'm going to be making it 
with the grays and the silvers because I think that is just so stinking beautiful. Okay, so what we're going to do, let's grab an envelope. And so what did I do? I stamped pretty much one, two, three. And the paper did the rest for me. Um, I am going to use, here it is right here. I think this is already six inches. Yep, pretty close to it. And then we're going to go over here to two and a quarter. Just about done this bottle I swear I think I just opened that a glue up and then it's but then again like I said when I'm making cards every day and that's not a joke I mean my family can fully vouch for that So yeah, after I have um, our uh, Thursday class, which it, I believe it is on the 20, 21st, so then that following Monday when I come on will be the 25th, I will show you guys the cards that we made at our class because they are really cute. One is very elegant and beautiful, and I think you guys are going to love it. Um, all right, let me grab, I'm going to grab, I think, this tree again. And I'm going to stamp that tree right down here with the stem kind of shortened. And I'm going to do that in basic gray. So let me grab my scrap here. like that. So now we have, let me get this out of the way. And this out of the way. And this out of the way. Oh yeah. I, geez, I was cutting that and talking. Didn't even tell you guys. So I used the banners, um, pick a punch. And I just banner end the ends of this little gray piece so I could wind up making it kind of have a little bit of, instead of just a square piece there or a rectangle piece there. That's what I used on the ends of that because I don't think I mentioned that to you guys. All right, let me get these three cards brought back in. So there's the back of the envelope. There is the front of the envelope. I'm going to set that there. Then the inside. Then we have this one with the envelope that we went ahead and embossed. And that card. And then we have this little beauty right here with that paper on that one. So there are the three cards. So like, comment, share, and you will be entered in to win one of these cards. So next week, I will be drawing a winner, and it might just be you. So hit that like, hit the share, comment, and I hope to see you guys next week. Also, I would love to earn your business. So if you have any questions about any of the product that I used today, please feel free to message me and let me you know, ask away. There is no stupid questions. So please don't feel like, you know, oh my gosh, that might be a dumb question. There's no dumb questions. You know, we all are here to learn and to make prettiness with paper. So 
Like I said, I would love to earn your business. This is my current host code. Um, tomorrow it will be up on the blog, stampinthepinkbarn.blogspot.com. You will find all the dimensions. You will find um, all the products that I've used. And um, this video will be linked onto my blog as well. So you guys can go over there and fast forward to see it put together so you don't have to hear me yapping. So, all right, you guys, have a great week. I will see you guys next Monday. Bye-bye.